Pauli of Fe. So you come on five truths about grace you should know. And these five truths are very important. Now, as we know, I want to pick one definition from Reverend uh, Adeyemo. He said, grace is the G behind the race of man. Now, grace, the G behind the race. Now, if you put it in a clearer meaning, it means that grace is the hand of God at work in the life of man. Now, kila anke lori ofe, owa olorun to nshise ninu aye eniyan la anke lori ofe. That's grace, the hand of God at work in the life of man. Now, that's what grace is. I say it again, grace is the hand of God at work in a man's life. That's why you see that when a person is graced, people will see, he himself will see that there are some things about his life that is beyond explanation. You know, I was listening to Mommy Ade Tuberu many years ago. Many years ago, she's the one, uh, uh, the coordinator of She Matters on a radio station. She said she, she was a chain smoker. That she, God now took cigarette from her and gave her microphone instead. Now, nobody would have believed that such a person can be a servant of God. Now, she told us in one of her experiences that she aborted to the point that she did abortion to the point that when she aborted the last one, the doctor told her not to come again. But when God, you know, called her, God blessed her with marriage. She, she kept having children. Grace is the hand of God at work in the life of man. I pray in the name of Jesus, may you enjoy grace in Jesus' name. Now, we all know that grace was given to us by Jesus. He paid the price for grace. But there are principles you should understand. Let's look at the first one in John chapter 1 and verse 17. John chapter 1 verse 17. Five truths about grace you should know. Important truths, and I want you to take your notes. Make sure that you register these messages in your heart. Are you there? Uh, John, John chapter 1 and verse 17. You can project it on screen for us so that it will make our time to be well maximized. We have a lot to do, and I want to close the service at exactly 1 o'clock according to as planned. John chapter 1 and verse 17. Are we there? John 1, 17. He said, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? By Jesus Christ. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Now, if you look at the scripture we have read, it shows us that grace and truth is like, listen, two wings that makes a bird to fly. Which means grace and truth are the two wings that makes us to enjoy God. Now, what is the principle I want us to get here? Grace and truth are united. They cannot be separated. No matter the kind of grace you enjoy, listen, walking in the truth is what will determine if such grace will continue. Now, somebody cannot be saying, ah, Pastor, I have grace, and because I have grace, I want to live anyhow. No. Grace can be aborted, can be removed from a person's life if you as a person choose to abuse the grace. How do we abuse grace? We abuse grace when we do not consistently walk in truth. Now, there are several errors on the online now. Somebody will say, oh, don't worry, you are grace. Whatever you do, the grace will cover you. It is not true. Grace and truth, they are related. The Bible says, grace and truth came to Jesus. No matter the kind of grace you enjoy, walking in the truth is what will determine if such grace will stay with you. Understand that clearly. So you cannot say, I have grace. It's just like somebody is saying, oh, they favor me so much in my place of work. And because they favor me, I can get there at the time I like. Grace can be abused. And how do you abuse grace? You abuse grace when you consistently walk against the truth. You abuse grace when you consistently walk against the truth. I wrote here, there is no how you will continue to enjoy grace if you consistently, unrepentantly walk against the truth. Romans chapter 6 verse 15 confirms that. 
If you consistently, unrepentantly walk against the truth, grace will not continue. We have been prayed for. Receive grace. Jesus has died to give us grace. But hear me. You maintain the grace of God in your life when you consistently walk in the truth. Look at uh, Romans. Romans chapter 6 and verse 15. You will see that the Bible clearly says in it, What then? Shall we, shall, look at it. Shall we, shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Are we going to continue to sin against God and say, After all, no. For the grace of God to be sustained in your life, you need to consistently walk in the truth. I wrote here, You maintain your relationship with God. When you consistently embrace the truth. Now, and there's nobody that will say they don't know the truth. You are born again. You've given your life to Jesus Christ. Continue to walk in the truth. And you will see that you will continue to walk and enjoy grace. Let's quickly look at number two. Number two. I'm rushing because of time. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. Grace is given to make us remain humble in heart. What's the second thing I want you to understand about grace? God gives us, gave us grace to keep us from being proud. Listen, God gave us grace to keep us from what? From being proud. If they remove grace from our life, most of us will think that we can become whatever we want without God. The scriptures is clearly, it's clear. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself, what? More highly than he ought to, to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Now, grace is the reason why you will not be proud. If you look at people that are so proud, so pompous, go and find out. They have not sat down to ask themselves to discover the grace of God they are enjoying. So, Lara, Iditi, Olorun se yonder ma ori ofe fun wa ni e o. Lati je ka ma ni emi rele. Ta wa na ma wo pe ah o to de ni o. Ohun ti mo je ohun to nsele nu aye mi to ba yowo ori ofe kuro. Mi roke mo ti le to bi mo se to. How many of you can proudly say and beat your hand in your chest to say that without God you can be where you are now? Nobody. They have not born that, they have not given back to that person. So, one of the reasons for grace is to make us to continue to remain humble in our hearts. That's why you see that somebody died while you were alive. That's why you see that somebody was struggling while you were progressing. Grace is the reason why we remain humble. I wrote here, grace is given to keep us from boasting. Grace is given to keep us from boasting. People who haven't discovered the level of grace they enjoy are often very proud. I did this. I made my calculations right. And because my calculations were, was right, I got to this point. It's a lie. You see, anytime I read this, this uh, uh, parable of this man, that the Bible calls him the rich fool. The Bible says, this particular day he came home, he sat down, he said, ah, yes, I have done so well. I've checked my store. I now see that I have so many good things in my store. Now my soul will sit down and rejoice. That same day, the Bible says, and the Lord said, your life will be taken from you. That same day, he thought he had all. He didn't know that. He had all the natural things, but God owns his life. Grace is given so that you and I will not boast as if we can become anything without God. Grace is given. Now look at the testimony that Pastor Shewuni was shared with us yesterday at the morning prayer Shiloh. If you remember that testimony, it will keep you humble too. He said he was on the mountain praying and he decided to rest. While he wanted to sleep, a woman called and said, Sir, are you Pastor Shewuni? He said, Yes. Sir, sir, for the past three months, for the past three months, they have uh, suspended me from my place of work. They have not paid me anything. They said they will not pay me. That's an investigation is on. Sir, somebody said I should call you. I believe in your God, sir. Sir, please pray for me. I want to say my name and other things for you to pray for me. If you pray for me so that they will restore me. Pastor Shil now told the woman. He said, don't worry. Send your details. Send your name. 
I will put you in prayer. He said, as he put, dropped the phone, he laid down to rest. All of a sudden, he had text messages coming in. He said he didn't pick it. He didn't check it. He had calls coming in. He was just sleeping. After a while, he picked the call. The woman said, your God is a great God. Ah, your God is a great God. As I finish speaking with you, they have just called me back from my place of work. Pastor Shion said he himself knew that he had not even prayed. That is a miracle that God has completed, but only wanted to give him something from. Listen, you can never be who you are without the grace of God. That's why no matter who you think you are, you better humble yourself. If they remove grace from you, you are finished too. So grace is given in order to re make us re uh, uh, hum uh, to remain humble in our hearts. Let's rush through number three. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, look at the third truth about grace you need to know. Number three, grace does not take the place of labor. Understand this truth about grace. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Grace does not take the place of labor. Grace, I come again. Grace does not take the place of labor. Grace does not take the place of labor. Can we read together after the count of three? Everybody, one, two, and let's go. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. But look what, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which will. can you see? When he started, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. But oh, he went for that to say, ah, but don't, let me tell you the truth. I labor more abundantly than they all. Which means that grace does not mean you should not work. Because some will just go and fold their arms and say, the grace of God will sustain me. There is no grace for the lazy person. Let me tell your neighbor, ask him, did you hear what Pastor just said now? There is no grace for the, la for the lazy. Now, if you ask everybody in Nigeria, what do we always say? We are praying for our nation. Let's pray for Nigeria. Let's pray for Nigeria. Now, why are we saying let's pray? Upon all the prayers we are praying, I wish our country is because we are not doing what we ought to do. Grace cannot do your work for you. Grace does not work for you. That's why Paul had to round it up. If he had stopped by saying, I am what I am, by the grace of God, nobody will do anything again. I remember one case like that. I won't forget. This particular woman, many years ago, she came to me and said to me, Sir, sir I'm a banker. I'm a banker. I have tried to pass ICANN because I want to, there are uh, opportunities in my place of work. I want to be promoted. But every time this woman faced ICANN uh, exam, she usually failed. And she said she has been doing it for eight years. How many years? Eight years. Looking me, you to pass ICANN exam. And she came. And at that time, me too, I was an ignorant pastor. He, she came and said, he's a demonic spirit. So I, we fasted and prayed. I prayed upon the pen for her to go and write the exam. I anointed her head to go and write the exam. She came out again and failed. There was nothing wrong with the pen. There was nothing wrong with the oil on the head. But she didn't read well. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hello. I don't think you heard me. She didn't read well. Now, she thought God would go do exam for her. God won't do your exam for you. Oh, Kawe, we need to offer cover me. Exam to fellowship, we go to pass. I put the pass, no man fail. <coughs> so, grace will never take the place of labor. I wrote here, no matter how grace you are, you will still need to do what is expected of you. No matter how grace you are, you will still need to do what is expected of you. Let's take number four. Because of my time. Number four. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. Galatians 2 9. It is important you take time to discover your peculiar grace. 
Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. It is important you take time to discover your peculiar grace. Now, what am I going to show us here from Galatians 2 9? Once they put it on screen, I'm, I, we are going to read. Every one of us don't have the same level of grace. There's a peculiar grace for each one. Now, look at what Paul said about himself in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9. Can we read, please? Make it bold so that we all can see. And when, G, when, when, uh, and when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they... And they to the circumcised. Now pay attention. The grace that was given to Paul was grace to have ministry among where? The Gentiles. But he, look at, he said, when they perceived, when the leaders saw it in us, that this is the grace they have. We all do not have the same kind of grace. Now, and what is the lesson number four? Find your kind of grace. Find the kind of grace that God has given to you. If you find your grace, you will discover that you don't need to envy anybody. One of the reasons for envy and unhealthy competition is because we are not paying attention to ourselves to understand the peculiar grace that we have. Now, we just saw a guest artist now. She came to sing. I know somebody will be saying in the choir, ha, uluwa, uluwa, feminine, I, 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 I want to, to be like this auntie. Now, look at her now. The way she sang, did she sing like a uh, uh, Chingwo? Answer me now. She, did she sing like my, my captor? Like Bidi Miolaoba? You see that she has chosen her own part. We all have area of grace. <coughs> Paul said, these leaders perceived, they saw it in us. And they allowed us to go do the work that is given to us. So every one of you, pay attention to your life. Discover the kind of grace that you have. Number five. The last one. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. Your measure of gift is what determines the measure of grace you will enjoy. Your measure of gift, so which means it is your gift that determines your grace. But to each one of us, Grace was given according to the, the measure of Christ's gift. Now, what does that mean? It means that it is your kind of gift that determines your kind of grace. Your kind of gift is what determines your kind of grace. Your kind of gift. So, find your gift. Once you find your grace, gift, you have grace for it. Now, what is the essence of me telling you this? Any gift you notice you have, look up church, you already have grace for it. Stop being afraid. If somebody asks me, Pastor Prince, will, will you ever be a pastor? When I was young, I would say no. Among my mother's children, I was the most shy. If I want to face somebody, not even the crowd, if I'm to stand in front of anybody, I will cover my face like this. But when the gift of my calling to ministry came, grace came with it. Listen, understand that that gift of Christ in your life, there is, you already have grace for it. Keep flying. Some of you are afraid. Pastor, I don't know. I don't know. Are you sure I'm not going to be killed by witches if I go do this? I was asking one of the ushers, why is it that so and so, so and so did not join the ushering in, among the children? They said they are, the parents of the, the young lady, lady said, don't put my daughter in the ushering for convention. A lot of people will come for convention. So that the, an evil arrow will not go and hit her. I say evil arrow, okay. Nibu. Whatever gift you have, you have grace for it. Don't be afraid. Run with that gift. And you will see that the grace of God will open doors for you. Now, pay attention to these five principles. Go back home and study them. Every gift that God gave you, he has given you grace for it. Every gift that God gave you, he has given you grace for it. Nothing should stop you from carrying out your gift. Nothing should stop you from engaging your gift. Because every gift you have, you have grace for I have grace for the gift of God in my life. So what are you supposed to do first? Go and discover your gift. 
Now, once you discover your gift, I'm gifted a singer, I'm gifted this, I'm gifted that, I'm gifted, you know, once you find your gift, you have grace already. Pursue your gift. Engage your gift. You will see that that grace will continue to make way for you. Are you blessed? Have you learned something? Hold on to these five principles. Truths about grace. They will help you. Let's prepare for dedication. We are still within time. I have 16 minutes to close the service. Leave this one. 